Good morning and welcome back. Uh, we are just rolling guests in and out of here one after the other. And now we've got Jim Gibson. Uh, he's one of the pastors, as he says it, at First Baptist <laughs> of Cleveland. And um, we're excited to have him here. He's got some very special things to talk about, one of which is this coming weekend and the Christmas program. Absolutely. So we'll get some detail on that. Tyler was here last weekend. That's and, what I understand. Uh, so we want to make sure we, we uh, get the word out and because mm-hmm. it, it's, it's an amazing amazing um, program that you I offer agree. the community, as well as go back to the history of Christmas. And, and We're going to try to do that yes, a little bit. Yes, yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, do it in a, a timely manner, I'm mm-hmm. sure. But, but yes, the true meaning of Christmas and why we celebrate this season. Right. So Josh and Jay are with us also. And, howdy, howdy. Good morning. Uh, they will interject. But um, Jim, tell us t- about this weekend. It starts okay. Friday. Yes. It's called The Sounds of Christmas, and it's going to be a presentation. I think we have about 125 to 150 choir members, orchestra. Uh, There's going to be drama, all different kinds of things. It's going to be fantastic, and there are four presentations of it. Uh, The first one is Friday night at 7, then Saturday afternoon at 4, and then Sunday at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. And uh, it's going to be a great time together, and we look forward to this every year. And it's really, uh, in a way, a sort of a gift to the community. Uh, we want people who are obviously from our church to come, but we also want other people to come, and we encourage our folks to bring guests. And uh, Tyler Brinson, who is our minister of praise and worship, does an incredible job. And so we look forward to this weekend. It's going to be awesome. Well, it's always first rate, everything that First Baptist does. And, you know, sometimes um, people will, will, I will hear things um, about First Baptist. It's so big Mm -hmm. and it intimidates people to to be there. It intimidates me sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's so many people to keep up with. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, our family is there now. Our kids had migrated over. Great Mm -hmm. youth program. We love Brian Preston and Jen Preston. And um, uh, so that, that sort of drew us there. Mm -hmm. And it's just a lot of great folks. You know, I look at it like uh, when I went to college. I went to UTK. Uh It was a huge place. You felt lost Mm -hmm. at first. But then it's like once you you get your niche or your major, and and those are the people that you you do life with and hang around with, it it becomes much, much smaller. I agree. And, you know, I think that no matter where you are, basically you have around uh, 70 to 100 people that you're close to. Two, doesn't matter if you're in a church of 200 or a church of 2,000. And so we really try hard to get people engaged in small groups so that they can get to know people on a personal basis. And I'll never forget what one of the former pastors of First Baptist Cleveland said, and this was, goodness gracious, 30 or 40 years ago. He said he believed that there wasn't anything that a small church could do that a big church couldn't do better, but He also said that it doesn't matter if you're a small church or a big church, you have a mission to do and God's going to use you in a mighty way. And we count it a privilege because we believe we can provide some things to the community Mm -hmm. that some other churches might not be able to do because of the generosity of our people. And, uh, you know, we have just great opportunities for people to get in small groups. And we Mm -hmm. try to make it bigger while we also make it smaller and just like you get to know a certain group of people since you've gotten to know since you've been there and we hope that everybody does that and you know we we um, <laughs> we know that sometimes um, we're perceived as a I don't know hotty toddy church or whatever and we really try to fight that image uh, just like the homeless gentleman who died Mm -hmm. this past Mm -hmm. week. Our church had a great impact. Matter of fact, I received a note from Jake Stum, who another homeless gentleman who had gone to some Sunday school classes when we were downtown here, and he just said what an impact the church had on him. He has now graduated from college, is married, has a child, and has another child on the way, and he was just talking about First Baptist ministry. And so we really try to sort of... uh, I don't know, maybe overcompensate and try to be ministry oriented after the tornado came through and what was that, uh, 2011, I believe. 
uh, Michigan Avenue School came over and used our church. And that was just yes. a really neat yes. way that God mm -hmm. allowed us to say, hey, we're here for the community to be a part of that. So anyway, we try to do that. And well, and I think, too, because, that, like you said, the generosity of the, the uh, members. Oh, it's amazing. Y you do give back so many. And you're able to do things on a, a bigger scale where, where more people can come and, and just uh, enjoy a, a fun time, no matter what exactly. it is. But like the program that's coming weekend you mm -hmm. know you just you hear um about the birth of christ you hear right. the message and the truth and mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about getting yep. that message of of uh of Christ out into the community to exactly. as many people as you can. And I'm thankful we live in a community that you still hear Merry Christmas and uh, nobody's afraid to say that and all yes. that kind of thing yes. because uh, that's what it's all about, Christ, and we have the privilege of being a part of communicating that and we're thankful for that. Right. Well, and I don't know if Josh or Jay had seen the news this week where the um, there's an atheist organization putting up uh, billboards across the country that says uh, make Christmas great again, skip church, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they had their, um, I guess their spokesperson on Fox and Friends, I'm a Fox News junkie, uh -huh. but um, he was on trying to explain the rationale behind it. Yeah. And was was he able to actually do that? Because um, <laughs> no, I mean, nothing he, he said seemed, made sense. He seemed sense. slightly, slightly misinformed um, a little bit. Yes, well, his perspective, his perspective. I missed that section. It must have yeah. been pretty cool. Yeah. Well, it was it, it was like, okay, Christmas is about Christ. And he's like, oh, well, no, no, it's not. It's about uh, giving and um, really kind of focused on <laughs> the whole the commercialism of it. The giving was established by Christ. Yeah, he that was, was the greatest gift ever given. I know, I and right. Ains Ainsley Earhart said, uh, I'm going to pray for you, and I would love for you to come to church with me <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I think historically the church has always had folks who've attacked the church and certainly attacked Christ, put him on the cross, as a matter of fact, and so we want to try to just... Uh, walk against that in a kind of loving way that says we appreciate your position but we want to share some things that we believe are truth and yes how we can communicate that with joy to the people that are around us that's a desire that we all have i think right i just as a believer get tired of the um you know and again this word has just been thrown around for the last couple of years the uh intolerance mm -hmm. of christians you know, because we are supposedly not tolerant of those yeah. unbelievers. And it's like, that's an oxymoron. I don't understand why people don't see our side of it. Yeah. Because they're they're not tolerant. Well, I think scripture, you know, the eyes of the unbelieving are blinded. I mean, that's a reality. And our, our challenge and task and opportunity is to allow the Lord to use us to open the eyes of the blind that they can see and Man, what a privilege we have to do that. Yes, yes. Um, share with us the history and, well, and the meaning. <laughs> Not the, I don't want to get into the yeah. history. We'll be here for a week. But uh -huh. um, uh, there, there's just so much rich information and, and um, just for people to understand and be aware of the story of Christmas mm -hmm. and where it did come from. Well, and I think that you can go back historically and there have been a variety of cultures that have celebrated different kinds of things at this particular time of the year uh, December 21st I believe being the shortest day of the year the winter solstice I mm -hmm. think they call it and a lot of cultures in past times have celebrated different kinds of things and uh, the earlier church uh, began to celebrate Christmas at this time but there have been other cultural things in Europe uh, where there were cutting down of trees and bringing the logs in in the winter time around this winter solstice to look forward to the new year they would burn these logs and the sparks were supposed to represent blessings and good wishes to come your way and the decorating of trees all of these kinds of things are a part of it and there's always going to be things that are contradictory if you will to the true meaning of things but from our perspective 
the birth of Christ, I think it was 1870, I believe, that the uh, holiday was officially declared a national holiday in the United States. And we don't really know for certain that December 25th was Jesus' birthday, but there are some interesting things historically from God's Word that uh, bring about some unique things to think about. And uh, whether it was December the 25th or not, personally, I don't think that is an absolute critical issue, mm -hmm. but that we do celebrate the birth of Christ. I think if it was a critical issue, the scripture would have said, here's where it was on the Jewish calendar yes. and made it a point because we know of other things that the Jewish calendar is very specific about. But of course, the Jews, for a large part, didn't accept Christ as we accept Him, and so there might not be an acknowledgement of that. And we understand that Hanukkah, right around Christmas time. Matter of fact, I think this year Hanukkah begins on the 24th of December and runs for eight days through whatever that would be, January the first or the second, and usually very, very close to it. And uh, so there's a lot of interesting historical things from different cultures, different countries. You know, the worshiping of the sun god, again, because it's a time when you have the shortest day of the year. Everybody, I, I love December the 21st, and I'm sad about June the 21st, because <laughs> December the 21st, days start getting longer. June 21st, days start getting shorter. And I like long days and that kind of thing. And that seemed to be things that people celebrated. I was reading somewhere that it was also at Christmas time that for a lot of farmers in or agricultural people in Europe, they would always um, butcher their animals so they didn't have to feed them through the winter. So usually it was in the winter they had more meat to eat than they ever did at times like uh, other times during the year. And so a lot of different kinds of things, but we have come to say we're going to celebrate it and recognize it. And just like I think we were talking before we came on the air, or maybe it was while we were on the air, it is a time of gift giving for us and for people who don't even uh, claim the name of Christ. I mean, you know, Black Friday, which I don't go anywhere on Black Friday, <laughs> but you know, man, the shopping, all that's leading up to Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. The whole concept of giving is something that we believe God established by giving His Son and we celebrate on that particular day. So a little bit about different kinds of things and here's what we do and you know you can't obviously people don't want to say Christmas because that includes Christ and if you don't want to believe in Christ you don't want to say Christmas that just goes with the territory right uh, yes but we're not going to do that and I appreciate the again the way our community and I think across our nation there's just sort of this uprising that says enough is enough, you know, let's mm -hmm. just get back to the reality of who we were established to be and that kind of thing. And so right. On. Well, so. I, know, I know Bill O'Reilly has been on a, a, a <laughs> rant the last couple of years because there's a war on Christmas. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it really does feel that way, you know, because people um, in the major shopping uh, stores in the big cities uh you know, they declined to say Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. It was Happy Holidays. Right. And, and it's just that whole um, uh, desensitiz uh, desensitizing, mm -hmm. I, I think, just little by little takes it out of our country. And, uh, you know, there's so many things that have been taken away from us that our country was founded on and those principles mm -hmm. and, and beliefs and, and, and our traditions uh, like prayer in schools and, uh, you know, the, the Ten Commandments uh, in mm -hmm. courthouses and, and in schools. And, um, you know, it's just, you know, the desensitization of of our country and people get used to it and think that that's Correct. the norm. I agree. And you know, I think, Wendy, that's really a, a sign of the times that the more attacks and persecution increase, uh, obviously the closer we're getting to the point uh, that Christ returns and uh, that's why we want to be uh, so diligent about sharing the good news of Jesus Christ in our community and literally around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
it's so neat. Things like Operation Christmas Child, uh, a, uh, a local church in uh, an eastern part of a country in South Asia. Uh, we got some pictures back. A church that we work with where they actually delivered just a few weeks ago Operation Christmas Child boxes from last year. You know, we think probably they get delivered immediately. Well, sometimes it takes months to get those shoe boxes out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be going to Mexico in February to help deliver uh, Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. But anyway, they were uh, delivering these boxes in this church that we work with. We didn't even know it was going to happen, but the pastor sent us some pictures. It was just incredible. Again, the mindset of the gift giving and telling these boys and girls in this South Asian country about the true meaning of giving and mm -hmm. all this kind of thing. So just a lot of things happening all over the world. There really is, a, I believe, a movement of God that's taking taken place, a spiritual hunger mm -hmm. that's greater than it's ever been. And uh, so I think while there are difficulties, God says there's going to be, the, the day is great to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And we need yes. to do that in love. You know, yes. I think the church has been, unfortunately, correctly accused of speaking the truth in anger or in hatred or with unkindness. And that's where I think what you were talking about earlier, you know, the church has been criticized. And we need to speak the truth in love. And sometimes we have a hard time doing that, and we want right. to be committed to that. So I know. And Operation Christmas Child, what a great way to get uh, that message, you know, however uh, – big or loud it is mm -hmm. to, to these kids it's it, and through the the gifts that yes. they get and they're so thrilled by it. and the people who are giving them oh. are you know have such a heart exactly. to give to these kids that they don't even know yeah. because of the love of Christ or just the love of of giving mm -hmm. and giving back and, and to those who are less fortunate and don't have the opportunities that right. we do here in our Absolutely. country yeah our church had the privilege of being a regional collection center and I didn't I don't remember getting the exact count, but there were about 20, almost 25,000 shoe boxes that came to our church from southeast Tennessee mm -hmm. that we then shipped to, I think ours went to somewhere in North Carolina to a processing center. But just thinking about all the children that uh, are going to be getting these, it's, it's really amazing. It yes, really is. Yes. It's unbelievable. And that again, the, the giving, the sharing is just a reflection of God's mm -hmm. sharing His mm -hmm. Son and giving Him to us and so right. on. You know, it's interesting, there's some thing, I, 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 children are very special to, to me and my family, my wife and I, and um, we uh, love to think about what Scripture says about children and these kinds of things. And I was reading a book a number of years ago about the seven feasts of Israel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, we talked earlier where the, the Jews rejected Jesus, but God still uh, has a desire to bless the Jewish people and different kinds of things like that. But an interesting thing that I read had to do with the date of Christmas, this is interesting, and the progression leading up to Christmas that relates to the development of a baby inside the mother's womb. It's unbelievable this comparison and again whether the date is December the 25th or not it can be debated. However, uh, with uh, Israel there are seven feasts I think and if you look at an ideal Jewish calendar, the first feast happens right around or near the spring uh, equinox, I believe is what they call it. And that's you know what helps determine Easter. But if you look at the ideal Jewish year and when Passover takes place all the way to Hanukkah, which is always right around Christmas, the number of days of that period is 280 days. Do you know what the term of pregnancy is for a woman and a baby? 
280 days. Well, is that just a, mm -hmm. as a guy named Milton Green would say, a coinky dinky, or was that? <laughs> something that's amazing. Well, this uh, gentleman named Zola Levitt, who was a Jew who became a believer, did a lot of studies, and he began to look at this just thinking about the feasts and this ideal Jewish year, and it's 280 days, and he had a friend, a lady who was a medical doctor who had delivered literally thousands of babies and he was just meeting with her and she made a statement that got his mind thinking, talk to me about the pregnancy and what takes place. And long story short, if you look at the various feasts and when they started and the time between each feast, they compare to the development of a baby in the mother's womb such that if that child was conceived at that ideal first day, 280 days later is Christmas Day. It's unbelievable. Wow. And he just talks, about, for example, the Feast of Tabernacles, mm -hmm. that happens I think about seven months after Passover. Feast of Tabernacles was, or excuse me, the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets happens about uh, seven months after that. The Feast of Trumpets coincides exactly to when the hearing in a child develops. It's unbelievable how God's Word is so rich and deep, and when we get into it, we are amazed at the brilliance of God and His design of things. And so he just talks about comparing different things in the conception, when the lungs develop, and how all that compares. And then Christmas Day, in this ideal Jewish year, Hanukkah would begin on December the 25th, and that's when that baby was born. So it's just amazing how things... You know, again, God's Word is just incredible. Uh, talk about something that nobody talks about much because it's sort of a weird subject, the old subject of circumcision, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the Jewish people circumcised their babies on the eighth day. Well, why couldn't it have been the sixth day or the fifth day or the ninth day or the tenth day? Well, medical research has now shown us that on the eighth day of a child's life is the highest level of blood clotting mechanisms in their body than their entire life. Well, is that just a coincidence? I don't think so. Uh, God's Word is unbelievable in how it describes things that happen. And wouldn't it be interesting if the 280-day duration is in reality a picture of when Christmas really is. I don't know if it is or isn't, but I just thought that unbelievably right. intriguing and interesting how that development of that 280 days in the feasts of Israel coincides with the development of a baby in a mom's womb. And just amazing. Our God right. is an amazing God. He There's is no so doubt amazing. About it. And, you know, that's just one example exactly. of, of the richness of, of His Word and uh -huh. the truth and, and, uh, and where it came from and the historical aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, th there's so many th conversations that uh, I've gotten into with my children. Who, uh -huh. You know, they question things, and it's great. Sure. That's what the Lord wants exactly. us to do. He doesn't worry it, about us doing that, uh, <laughs> right? Just you know, yeah. Don't don't be just somebody who who believes it because your mama or your grandmama. Mm -hmm told you this is how it is, you've got to know it and right. understand it and believe it. And then you go out and and you can share your faith because you understand it. Exactly. And um, I, I think that is so fascinating. Um, and, and just bringing in the history mm -hmm. of, of Christmas and the gift giving yeah. uh, for this season. And this you know, it's, I, I love the Oak Ridge Boys. I'm a country music fan, and uh, I don't know if that's good news, bad news, whatever, but uh, the Oak Ridge Boys talk about if every, and there's a song that Gold City Quartet sings, if every day could be like Christmas, what a wonderful year it would be. And I think if we could keep that mindset, uh, you know, man, it's, it's a great time of celebration. I know it's busy for people and we get caught up in all the Christmas rush and the parties and the activities, mm -hmm. but if we can just some way take some time to sit back 
and just re relax and enjoy what's taking place. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the things that not just our church, but every church that does a Christmas pageant or program or presentation. And again, it can be a, the tiniest church in Bradley County or the largest church in Bradley County. It doesn't matter. It's a time of just reflecting uh, the joy of this kind yes. of season and, uh, you know, we all have the opportunity to participate in that. And again, even people that are Grinches all the <laughs> other time of the year so often can be really joyful during the Christmas season. It just brings something out in us, I think, that is, you know, uh, uh, road rage may diminish some. Now, <laughs> line rage at the stores may increase, but road rage may decrease a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> right. Well, and, and I would, speaking of lines, I was one of those people in Target the Thursday evening oh, only because... You're crazy. I was, it was not on purpose, <laughs> trust me. I had to get a birthday gift. Oh, wow. And, you know, being clueless like uh -huh. I am, we'd had the turkey, I'm on my way home, and I had to have this present the next day. And so uh -huh. I showed up at 6, yeah. it just Parker and I... And, and I guess that's about when they opened, wasn't That it? was when they opened, oh, yes. Wow. So I go in and... It it was the craziest thing I've ever experienced. You uh -huh. know, lines for the Apple products. Yes. And I'm like, do I need an Apple product? I'm not in this giant uh -huh. line. And, uh -huh. and uh, but um, I did notice that that people in line were so gracious. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, it was like it was it was a good <laughs> thing to see. And all the craziness and madness of, of people doing their holiday shopping mm -hmm. and um, getting their gifts, they were still so gracious. Yeah. And even when I got to the line to pay, and uh -huh. you're going in and out <laughs> of the aisle. Like Disney World. Yes, yeah. before you even got to the cash register. Uh -huh. um, you know, people were just talking and chatting and, yeah. and just um, just so kind and compassionate. And, and it's amazing. You know, talking to people behind me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, you need to go to Kohl's because they have pillows for $2. <laughs> and, and I'm like, thank you. And, and I, I need to do that because I want some holiday pillows. <laughs> just yeah, trying exactly. to be so helpful. Yeah, that's very so true. So I think that you're right. This time of year just brings that um, – sense of joy and and peace and uh and giving and uh this community especially is so giving and we just had new hope oh. pregnancy center uh mm -hmm. here before you came on and talking about uh uh pregnancies and, and children and you know giving people that hope yes. uh that feels like they have no hope mm -hmm. and you know we need to be doing it the entire year but christmas does bring that sense about uh, you know, that there's just more out there to life than just like the atheist on Fox Fox and Friends the other mm -hmm. day said, you know, you just die and you're in the ground. And there's you know, nothing. I think, too, that this time of year, whether it's a, a family that has recently lost a loved one, I mean, I think about the families impacted by the storms in McMinn and uh, Polk County. I think about the people impacted by the fires. Uh, up in Sevier County, man, it's going to be a tough time. The yes. recent loss of a family member, and there are people who uh, may have gone through a divorce or had a child that's gone away from what a parent had hoped. And I think Christmas can be one of the toughest times, and that's why I think too, as churches and as believers, we need to be encouraging during this time and know that, man, there are some people that are struggling through these mm -hmm. holidays mm -hmm. and try to minister. And again, I think that's what all the churches uh, who who do uh, special programs, man, let's focus on this and maybe sort of be able to lay aside for just a few minutes the difficulties and challenges and hurts that we're facing. Focus on the Lord and uh, that'll help us to address what's going on in our life. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I agree. And and um, we want to mention, too, once again, the, the program this weekend. Yes. Uh -huh. that, that people can come to and just get out and, and enjoy that um, the, the, the Christmas season and the birth of Christ. And mm -hmm. uh, there's no better way than doing that. To me, it just, it just fills you up when you get to go to a program or, you know, when they sing at Lee or uh, the, the children. I know Tennessee Christian's uh -huh. choir has yep. been all over town. I'm uh -huh. like, they are rock stars. Just sing these little uh, elementary school 
school kids Absolutely. have been to every event. Yeah. So just get out and enjoy it. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, you know, I want to invite you this weekend again. It's uh, Friday night at 7 o'clock at First Baptist Cleveland, Saturday afternoon at 4, and then Sunday afternoon at 4 and Sunday evening at 7. It's going to be a great time of celebration. We'd love to have you join us at First Baptist. And anybody's welcome. If you go to another church regularly, that's fantastic. If you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you. But whatever the case, we'd love to have you come and be a part of this uh, special time, the Sounds of Christmas, this weekend at First Baptist Cleveland. Yes, thank you so much for joining us, thank Jim. You. I mean, it's been thank uh, you all very much. Good conversation and very uh, enlightening, and, well, and going into a little anyway, bit of the history. <laughs> yes, I, maybe you should do a, a show just on uh, uh, the seven feasts. I tell you, it, it would be amazing. That's for sure, no <laughs> doubt about that. Can he come back on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> thank you all very much. Thank it's been you. A pleasure. Have a great Merry day. Christmas to all of you. Thank we'll you. We'll take a break and be right back.